I'm Rufus Isaacs from the Department of Entomology here at Michigan State University. And I'm out in a vineyard here today to talk about phylloxera. Grape phylloxera is an insect that has caused devastation to the grape industry through history, in particular when it reached France and got to unresistant vinifera vines in France and, and almost caused the destruction of that industry, which was then saved by the arrival of the resistant rootstocks that we have from wild grapes that grow here in the uni eastern United States. So phylloxera continues to be an insect that's native here in this region on wild grape vines, and depending on the variety that a grower may, may produce, uh, can, can become a pest in, in commercial vineyards. And we're here at one of the varieties that's particularly susceptible to, um, to grape phylloxera. And we know Frontenac and some other hybrids tend to, uh, to be susceptible. But this really shows what phylloxera can do. We've got, we've got leaves here that are galling. These little bumps on the leaves are caused by the phylloxera insect. And it makes these leaves twist up and really become quite inefficient at collecting sunlight, and turning that into sugars for the clusters. A good example of what's happened during this growing season is shown on this shoot here, just in front of me where if you look at the older leaves that were produced maybe six weeks or so ago, they just have a little bit of infestation. And then as you go out sort of in, in time, as you go down through this chute, you can see an increasing level of infestation. And then the latest ones that have just come out in the last, um, in the last week or so have even more of that infestation and are starting to curl up. And then these here right at the tip, even though they're tiny little leaves, they already have 20 or 30 um, small galls on the back of them, so they'll be, they'll be um, clustering up. And this shows that phylloxera has uh, multiple generations during the season, during the summer. The insects, if they're not controlled, are, are developing, reproducing, spreading out onto the foliage, and, and, I, and, and seem to prefer the younger, tender foliage at the end of the shoots. So, what happens with phylloxera during the growing season when the leaves are out, is that these little tiny aphid-like insects crawl all over the grapevine and they find susceptible tissue. A female will go inside there and lay a lot of eggs and then those eggs hatch and the tiny, um, the tiny little aphid phylloxera insects are inside there and if we open up one of these you would see maybe 10 to, to 30 of those tiny little insects inside there. They're, they're small and yellow and, and those are the phylloxera feeding inside the, the leaf galls. Of course, when these leaf gall densities get really high, that just causes that leaf to roll up and, and instead of being a nice flat plane that's absorbing sunlight, it's now re really mashed up into a, a much smaller leaf area. Phylloxera in the later part of the season um, will potentially go back down onto the roots of the vine and that's where it spends the winter, down feeding on roots. So we have an a very complicated life cycle with this insect where it's feeding on the leaves and there's also a part feeding on the, on the roots. Control of phylloxera in varieties that are particularly susceptible to it is possible, especially by, uh, one key thing is to look for the start of these galls in the spring. So usually when the shoots are maybe six or eight inches long, you might start to see the very first signs of a gall being formed. And that's the key time uh, to protect the leaves and there's a number of different options uh, of insecticides available for this. Protect those leaves so that the insects don't survive to start the gall and then start those um, generations starting up again. And just recently, in the last couple of years, there's been a, a, new, um, a new class of chemicals, that insecticides that have been made available to the grape industry that are absolutely um, uh, much more effective on phylloxera because they not only will um, will control the phylloxera in the leaf stage, but they can move in the vine in the transpiration stream and also in the, in the, the liquids going back down into the, into the roots. And so what we're seeing so far is, is good control in the canopy, but then also those, those uh, phylloxera down on the roots being controlled. And this, this is a new, a new development for phylloxera control that's encouraging because it may mean that we could get long-term control rather than only being able to control it on the foliage and then having that reinfestation from the roots every year.